if you have a creek or ditch on your property like I do, and you need some way to get across it, like for me, I bought this land, I had a house on one side of the creek and 50 acres of land on the other side of the creek. I really had no way of getting my lawnmower, four-wheelers, well, not the four-wheelers, I could go through the creek with four-wheel drive, but uh, tractors and things like that across, or even to walk across it without getting wet. I had to think about building a bridge. And so, this is the bridge that I built, but first, I want to show the creek. This is the creek, it's probably six, seven feet high on the banks, and during a heavy rain, all the rain north of here, about seven miles of creek, it floods, it'll even overflow the banks on a real heavy, heavy, heavy rain. So I had to think about building a bridge. And so I did, I did a bunch of research. I decided the cheapest and most economical way to do it was to build um, out of uh, utility poles. So I found some on Facebook Marketplace, pretty reasonable, I think it was 40 bucks a piece. Different sizes, like 40 foot, 36 foot, 38 foot, 37 foot. I was like, I can make that work. My span here was about 35 foot or something like that. And I had to um, make sure I had enough to lay over the edges of the bank. And some of the places the bank was eroding. You can see like right right there, it just starts eroding over time. So I found a spot that was the highest spot because the water level gets so high that it wanted to hit the bridge and uh, carry it downstream. That would suck all this work. And my bridge was floating away to the river. Um, so anyway, I found some beams, uh, light poles, utility poles of different sizes. And that didn't matter because I was able to retrofit those in and make them work. But here is the creek. And my, of course, my puppy loves to play in the water. Favorite thing to do is come to the creek. So yeah, so as you see, this is the top side, which is two by eights all the way across with some five inch wood screws underneath. I'm going to show you here. It's the utility poles. As you can see, I got four of them lined up. Side by side. The inner tracks right here is for the small vehicles. Like a tractor, something like that. Or side by side. And the outer ones for the water based vehicles. As you can see on the end, I use center blocks to prop up the utility poles on so they get them off the ground so they wouldn't rot. Even though these center poles are uh, treated, I still want to get them off the ground. And since the rush of the water is so heavy, I took four by four posts and put them in the ground. You can see it right there. And cemented them, use some quick creek and put them in the ground so if it did get high enough I'd have four of those or maybe it's six um, on each side to to keep it stationary to keep it from floating down the river down the creek I did have to go once I was done there's a little bow in this this beam here and I had to put in this little support beam I was trying to avoid putting in supports a lot of people put the supports along the creek on each side but because of the heavy flow I wanted to um avoid doing that but this one was close enough to the creek bank plus it was hard when i dug down the ground was very soft i finally got down to clay put the post in it was taller than this it was sticking like way up like six feet and took a mini excavator that i had access to and just banged it down for a good 10 minutes just i better hit it 50 times banging it down far as it would go until i hit solid ground i felt like it was solid i then took the same mini x and hooked a chain to the uh, to the board here, I mean the pole, and lifted it up probably two or three inches and then put the pole under it, or cut it and put the po um, this pole under it to support it. And now it doesn't bow at all. That fixed it. It doesn't flex or bow pretty much at all, even when I drive my three, 4,000 pound tractor across it. Now, I wanna show something else. Because the poles are kind of uneven and they they're not exactly straight lines i had to come in and put in places a two by four and a one by four to actually and there's a two by four and a one by four to uh make it level across 
so I wouldn't have these bumps and ridges and ups and downs in the wood. Um, the, the four poles were four different lengths, so I just finished out the ends of the poles. I got some pictures I'll show later in the video how I did that. I extended them with some four by fours and just kind of spliced it together. But I was trying to do it on the cheap. Use little as money, had some leftover four by fours from another project I was working on. Do it. Now, getting the poles here was a trick. Because they're 40 foot long, you gotta have a pretty long trailer to put them on. And luckily, I had a friend with a gooseneck, and I paid him 100 bucks to go get them, and I appreciate him to go and get those for me. And they just live and dropped them off at my house. Now, putting them in here was kind of tricky. I had to actually scoot them across the creek with a skid steer, or you could use a tractor, until I got them down on the ground on the other end. Then I took a tractor on the other side, tied a chain to it, and lifted them up and backed it up. But there's a lot, you gotta have a lot of counterweight on the back of the tractor because the poles are pretty heavy on that end. Um, but it's pretty solid. I've had it for since September and now it's uh, June. So quite a few months and nothing's happened. Now my son points out, what about 15 years from now? Are you gonna feel comfortable driving your 4,000 pound tractor across it? Well, yeah, I guess. We'll see, I'm gonna keep a watch on it, maybe test it every year. I'll come across and check for rot and uh, termites or anything like that, but my guess is these poles are made to go in the ground and, and last 30 or 40 years. And so it well, should, should, should hold, but I'm gonna test it every year to make sure that I still got good support. But I use this thing to go tractors and lawnmowers and bikes and people. I think the heaviest thing I've brought across it is a tractor. It's 4,000 pounds. I'm a little scared to bring my car across it. But, uh, you know, maybe one day I'll be feeling brave. One thing I did do is I built a couple smaller bridges and I used to put gaps in between the wood. As you can see, this has only been eight or nine months and the sun's already drawed this wood up and made cracks. So when I put this one in, I, I flushed it right up against each other because I knew it would draw up. Um, and on the ends, I was gonna put a, wood, a wooden um, ramp to go up because it's, it's sitting off the ground a good three feet. I decided to just take my tractor and pile some dirt and that's worked great. I thought it might wash. I didn't know what might happen, but it works. That's that works really good. As you can see, I'm about three feet off the ground. That worked really well. Um, way better than wood. I think wood would have broke, but you could do wood or something else like that. Worked great. Now, my son's like, "Why didn't you just cut this tree down?" Well, it's a river birch, and I love trees, and so I just kept the tree there and just cut out a little notch for it. I thought it gave it some character. Now over time it's gonna grow and I'm gonna have to notch it out some more, but yeah. So this is my bridge. I'm proud of it, use it almost every day. Maybe you can build a bridge across your creek and have as much success as I did. Thanks.